What's going on everyone, Austin John plays here, and today I want to spend some time to talk to you about Super Mario Wonder and my thoughts on the game. You're probably going to notice that the room looks a lot different. I might put out a video talking about the renovation, but just take it as I did another renovation and it looks like this now. Super Mario Wonder releases October 20th, 2023. I actually got my hands on an early physical copy, uh, not provided by Nintendo, and I had some time playing the game, and I just kind of wanted to share my impressions and thoughts on it from someone who doesn't really play or enjoy platformers. My background on 2D platformers, I played new Super Mario Bros. Wii, and I played the Wii U one, and that has been my recent Mario 2D platforming. And honestly, I had no ambitions on completing those games because they just feel like repetitive after a while. And there's a few things that I don't like about the formula that has been changed, addressed, and completely overhauled for Super Mario Wonder, which I wanted to share with you because I really enjoy this game. As far as spoilers, I'm only going to be talking about things that you're going to experience within the first, let's say, two hours of the game. And honestly, there's not really too much to spoil because it's a Mario platformer game. It, if you played one, you've played them all. There's some differences, but it's mostly about how you experience it. On the main screen, you're going to be seeing all of the large seeds that you complete. That's how many worlds you've completed. And then below that is all the medals. One is for beating the game. Another is for collecting every single wonder seed, which is the, the thing that you want to get at the end of the level. One is for the equivalent of the three coins in every stage that you used to get. Well, now there's three coins in every stage that you have to get. And if you get all those, if you get all the flag poles, and then two more things, which is all of the standees, and then all of the badges. You also get to pick any character that you want. The Yoshis and Nabbit are invincible to, uh, to enemy damage, so if you want to have a second or third or fourth player who are less experienced in gaming, they can join in as those characters. If you're not great at platformers, you still shouldn't need them at some points, but if you want to play them because you're stuck on a level for whatever reason, go for it. There's no no shame in doing that. I don't know why I gravitated toward Blue Toad. Oh, but there is the new voice actor for Mario in this game who's not Charles Marnier, who's saying different lines, so you may want to see Mario and experience that. Very early, you're going to be introduced to the badge system, and there's a whole bunch of different badges that are three different categories. One of them, which is right here, these are called action badges. These action badges actually give you an additional action or change what you can do. Like typically you do that little whirl in the air when you press R or shake the controller. Well, if you have the boost on, then after you do the action, you go a little bit higher. When you start every stage, you could choose to swap the badge as well as every time that you die during the stage, you can swap the badge. So as you jump, you tap it, you go a little bit higher. And the badge system is really refreshing. It's nowhere near as in-depth as you would find in like Paper Mario, Paper Mario Thousand Year Door, or anytime that the Mario franchise has used the term the badges before. The second category is the boost badge, which does a variety of different things to sort of make your life a little bit easier or just change change your overall gameplay experience. The coin reward is what I ended up using the most, which every time that you defeat an enemy, you get, I think, three or four coins. So it helps accumulating the one-ups a lot easier. If you're constantly dying on a level, the auto super mushroom will make it that way you're automatically your larger character, and that way the first power-up that you get isn't just gonna be a mushroom, it's gonna be what is helpful for the course. And then there's things like add exclamation mark blocks, which on some levels make small platforms, larger platforms, things like that. There's rhythm jump, which we're gonna talk about that in a moment. Also, there's expert badges, which kind of make it harder for you. But this one I want to talk about, which is called Jet Run, which makes you run very, very fast and very difficult to control and you can't stop running. I feel like maybe the speedrun community is going to really like the Jet Run and they're going to try to see if like it's a difficult badge to control. But if you do, you go a lot faster. So maybe that's going to be its own thing. I don't know. But the rhythm jump badge makes it so every time that you jump on the last beat, 
So it's like bur -da, bur -da, bur -da, bur -da, jump, bur -da, bur -da, bur -da, bur -da, jump. If you do that, you gain extra coins by doing that. And the thing they don't tell you is this is a rhythm game. It's it's very music oriented. There's so much having to do with music. And I feel like instead of just calling it Super Mario music, Super Mario orchestra or anything else like that, they decided to make it this fantastical route. And what's really, really nice is as you're going through, you're having this varied experience. That after you're done with a level, things change, and they change a lot sometimes. This bull rush coming through... By the way, this is the drill power-up. I don't know if that's been a Mario game before. I know that the elephant one is new, but the drill... Drill is honestly one of my favorite, and just lets you cheese courses a little bit better. Yeah, that's the reason I like that spiral badge, because I typically just like to run through the levels, and then if I accidentally mess up, I can just hit that and then usually avoid dying, which is nice. Sometimes you're going to be seeing the wonder flower that makes it into wonder mode, very obviously, and sometimes it's a little bit hidden. Like, I know it's inside of these four blocks right here. There's a guy over here, right? Yeah. I have to taunt him to come over here, and then he's going to hop over there, and then it's going to knock out, because I already got the wonder seed for that, that's what happens. And now, there's a giant stampede. This half of the course is now a giant stampede, which you don't have to get the flower. You could instead go through the course normally and experience it that way, or this, you know, completely remixed version of it. See how we just knocked the flagpole down? That's how, that's their way of saying, hey, we're bringing you to a different exit, but you have to replay the level in order to go get that flagpole back there. Which I think is pretty amazing. Anyways, that's the wonder seed that you get for completing this, and not all of them make the game easier. Some of them make it much harder. Some of them change the timing of the actual game's engine and actually make the game slower or faster. Some of them change the environment, but not character movement speed. Some of them change perspective. Some of them, you become an enemy and you have to run around. In one of them, you become a Goomba who can't jump or do anything and you just have to waddle around everywhere. The fact that every course has a very different feel to it is the reason that I enjoyed this platformer game more than previous Mario games. I'm not lying, I don't like Mario platformers at all. I really don't. So some levels have a secret exit. Some of them don't have a secret exit. Some of them just have a secondary exit. And then also while you're playing through, you have sometimes this more open area and then you go to this valley and now it's more linear. Sometimes you're gonna come across a level that is bright red and you're gonna see that difficulty ramped up to four. The fours are hard. This level you can experience within the first half hour of playing the game, and after you beat it, you're now on this little trip here to see a whole bunch of levels that you otherwise wouldn't see for your first expert badge, and then to Special World. If you played Super Mario on the SNES, that Special World, they all had gimmicks. This Special World is extremely difficult. There is one of these courses that took me 45 minutes for three days in a row to actually beat it. And I only stopped after 45 minutes because that's when my hands hurt. I'm also making the mistake on playing a platformer by using the joystick instead of the D-pad, but it's what I started playing it on and it's what I got used to. This level right here is a prime example as far as this is a rhythm game. So you have a timer at the top, and you have to wall kick up this entire way. And if you're too early, you die. And if you're too late, you die. If you're any more than those four beats later, you die. And the reason I was so early is because you have to be like, really on top of your timing. That way you have enough time at the end. Here's the running part. And then we go down to two. I mean, at this point, it's muscle memory, but even after you're going flawlessly, you may have not been going fast enough, and then you die at the end. Am I gonna nail this again? I wasn't fast enough. 
all the way up until the very end. And that's the point that you have to start critiquing yourself. And I hold the screenshot button to be like, okay, what did I do wrong? When I was landing on the platforms, I was having that little turn around animation, which I'm losing that, you know, half a second. I have to cut those out in order to actually beat the level. Not fun. Not fun. Amazing. But obtainable. You don't need to be like a Kaizo expert in order to do these levels. You can do it. It's gonna suck. It's gonna take a while but you can do it. Let's talk about standees. As you're playing through, you can have these standees that's gonna be showing up on a course to kind of give people help and help you respawn if you're having trouble. So once the game is finally live, your experience may be easier. And standees, you could collect a whole bunch of different standees per character. And there's like a, for lack of a better term, a loot box system that for 10 of the flower coins, you're gonna get one random standee. And it wasn't until like my 70th standee did I get a duplicate, I just got a duplicate. And then in Special World you could pay 30 for a specific character and you know that it's going to be one that you don't have yet so you're guaranteed to not get a duplicate. I don't know if that's actually worth it or not, I just know that there's a whole bunch of standees and that's gonna be a little bit of a grind and something that I'm probably not gonna do until maybe someone points out, hey, this is the best level to grind flower coins on. I also finished every single level and I'm missing two badges and I don't know where they are. Maybe I just overlooked buying it somewhere. I, I have no idea where these two badges are. There's also some levels that only have one wonder seed in them and they typically play a little bit differently. Some of them, you have to knock out a bunch of enemies. I wanna talk about one that's called Search Party. This one, you have to go through as different characters in order to get different hints on where you need to go. I saw those coins there, so I thought I should jump and collect the coins. And you see how it has that little Princess Peach crown icon? If I were to come here as Princess Peach, I would be hinted at where that box is before I got that box. Granted, once you play online and standees are a thing, maybe it's gonna be a lot easier. I actually came here while playing with four controllers for all of the hints until I was able to find out where all the secrets were and then I was able to complete the level. Mario Wonder was fun and refreshing. It takes about 14 hours to complete to the main story. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. I've been playing for a total of, I think my logged hours is 30 hours to collect all the wonder seeds. And then, you know, I could qu easily quadruple that time for me to go through, get all the flag posts and all of the, um, the purple coins on the levels. If I wanted to go through 100% the game, probably looking at 100-ish hours. Definitely a lot of fun. And as far as a Mario 2D platformer, cause let's be honest, who's gonna buy Mario Wonder? People that love platformers, a mom who's buying a Mario game for their kids and also is gonna be buying Mario Kart, probably Mario Kart first. And then they're gonna be tossing up between Mario Wonder and Mario Odyssey, cause they don't know which one to pick up. This is a better experience than new Super Mario Bros U was, and I'm happy about that. I wanna know what you guys think. If you're gonna be picking up this game, if my thoughts, opinions, or something I said sparked you to lean one way or the other, leave a comment down below. I'd love to see what you have to say. Thank you so much for being here. If you're new to the channel, consider subscribing, turning on notifications. Until next time, Austin John out.